Awesome. Coach Ellis Williams here with the Charlotte Observer. First, welcome to Charlotte. Hope things are well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm curious if you could just talk a little bit about uh, your first impressions of this offensive line group and specifically what it enticed you uh, to take this job here and join the Panthers. Uh, you know, the, the group, there's a young group, as you know, um, there's a lot of athletic kids in that room and, and getting to know them now for the last uh, three days, getting them in the room, it, uh, uh, they're willing to learn, they're, they're accepting new, new things and, and, and absorbing a new offense, which is very uh, obviously important during this time. Um, but I just, you know, I think the, the willingness to learn and accept change uh, is very uh, encouraging to a coach and uh, it's a two way street. I mean, I, as much as I have to accept them, they have to accept me. And I think, uh, you know, you can tell early in the process that uh, this, this group of men wants to be good and, uh, and are willing to work for it. Great answer. Thanks coach. Here we go. Joe person is scholar. Hey, excuse me. Good to see you, James. Um, I'm with the athletic here in Charlotte. And uh, wanted to ask you about Brady Christensen. Um, I think Matt told us uh, at the combine that, that you saw some things you liked in Brady's game. Uh, specifically, wondered what you thought about Brady as left tackle possibility. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, when it, you know, when you come in as a new coach, and and you you know, the first thing you do is you go and you watch all the film. Uh, from the game, the game film, the preseason games, and I take it all the way back to training camp. Uh, that way you can see how a player develops throughout the year and, and what he's currently is at this time. Um, <clears throat> and the, th you know, the things that you see with trade, you see a very highly athletic guy. Um, he's quick off the ball. He takes good, has good footwork. Um, you know, he has those intangibles. He's a hard worker. You can tell that. Um, things that, you know, things he does from a mental standpoint, he doesn't get uh, disrupted when things are bad. You know, he gets back up, runs the next play, um, doesn't have mental errors, things like that are real noticeable. Um, but, you know, he, he's a de guy that will definitely be pressing just like everyone else uh, for a spot. Um, you know, obviously the first thing is to, to make a roster and then obviously then to start positioning yourselves uh, in positions to be in the starting lineup. Um, I believe you asked me if would he be a, a candidate at left tackle. He absolutely will, sure. But he, he's a unique athlete. He could play probably all five if you really got right down to it. So, you know, I think, you know, it's too early to tell if you say that he's going to be in this position or that position. I think, you know, in fairness to the player uh, and the process, trust in the process of what's going on, um, let's just see what, what happens here and get to camp. And then obviously the head coach, he'll, he'll decide uh, where people play. I understand that James, for sure. I, I, just quick follow up. Uh, Matt had talked at times about not sure if Brady had the arm length for, for left tackle. Um, and, and then said, you know, after the fact, maybe he does wonder where you came down on Brady's arm length at that position. Um, you know, I, I kind of look at production, you know, and to me, um, the young man got to play, uh, don't, uh, I'm 95% sure, but I believe he started the last three ball games of the season at left tackle and he improved with each outing. So, uh, to me, and I know there were some good rushers, uh, the saints obviously have good rushers, uh, it was against Tampa Bay has good rushers and, and he improved with each outing. So, uh, for me, I, I would not think that it would be an issue from my standpoint. I think it's just, you know, I think what Coach was saying, because we've talked about that, obviously, uh, and I believe what, you know, what Coach is saying is that, look, yeah, we everybody would love to have this and that, but not everybody has all that. I mean, that's those are rare people to find, and it's, it's hard to, to speculate that. But if a guy's blocking a guy, you know, I mean, hey, does he, is he win? Is he productive? That's what matters. Hey, Coach Scott Kelly, you're with uh, Sports Illustrated. Welcome to Charlotte. Um, Thank you. Just kind of want to get your your thoughts on Bradley Bozeman, kind of where he may fit in in the offensive line. Scott and Matt both talked about how much leakage there was this past season, kind of in the interior of the line. So, 
how much does he help uh, fix that? And where do you kind of see him lining up at? Well, you know, first and foremost, you're adding a guy who's been starting for three years. I mean, he's, you know, he's played, started at guard. He has started at center for the past two. Um, you know, he brings instant credibility and toughness to the inside three. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that are going to be competing in a lot of obviously different positions, but um, the things that he brings and the things that he helps are the intangibles, work ethic, toughness, come to work every day, assignment sure. The, you know, there's really, you know, when you start talking about measurables, how do you quantify that? Well, you quantify it by action. And he has clearly done that and played at a high level with a high-level quarterback in an offense that runs a football. So, you know, we're going to rely on him to do a lot of things for us. Where he fits initially, we'll have to see. We'll go with Jonathan Alexander, followed by Darren, and then David Newton. Hey, James. Jonathan Alexander, Shot Observer. Hope you're doing well. Doing well. Thank you. Good, good. Um, you know, a lot of people say this off this offensive tackle class is pretty deep, and I think Ben McAdoo talked about it yesterday too. Um, you know, where do you what do you think about it, and and how when you're determining who's the right guy at offensive tackle, what what factors going, what things do you look for? Um, you know, I I think really just like any line coach looks to see if he's productive, and meaning so is that. You know, we all have different fundamentals, techniques that we want to employ and, and put in for our players. But at the end of the day, does the guy block somebody? Does he stay in between the ball carrier and his assignment? Does his assignment not get to the quarterback? Um, is he a person who isn't jumping off sides or a penalty, you know, every other play? I mean, those things, they sound so basic, but in reality um, – that's what you look for and a guy that has some attitude, you know, that'll play. Because um, once they get here, if they're already possessing those skills or those traits, fitting it into a technique, a hand placement, or whatever it may be, um, that's relatively, uh, you know, it's not easy. Through repetition, they'll get better and it'll, and, it'll, and it'll enhance their performance. But you're really looking for a productive football player. Can I ask you, what do you think about the, the top guys? You know, uh, often – you hear guys like Neil, Ekwandu, and, and Cross, but what do you think about that top core in general? Oh, I think they're all fine players. And, you know, I'm not uh, – and please, uh, no disrespect, I'm not skirting your, 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 uh, your question by any sense of imagination. But I think when you're talking about the draft, I think those things, uh, quite frankly, should be directed towards the general manager and the head coach. Um, that stuff is obviously a strategic thing for everybody. And, I, you know, I will not – comment on draft players that aren't here just uh, not skirting your deal I just I know I know where I need to be in that lane I understand thank you thank you James Darren Gant Panthers.com here um you coached a number of pro bowlers in Green Bay who came from mid-round late round backgrounds are there common traits you look for when you're trying to find a guy to develop, for lack of a better word, and were there common things about those guys that you saw when they came in? Uh, I was kind of uh, the last gentleman's question, Darren, was was similar. I give you a similar answer: is that is he productive? Uh, did he win? If he's from a smaller school, does he dominate that level? You know, those things are important. Um, I, I, I just think, what is his attitude? I mean, you can find out a lot just watching a tape if, let's say, a team is struggling, uh, you know, and, and losing 48 to 10 and there's four minutes to go and you're still in there playing. Does his production go up? Does it stay the same? Is he still fighting? I, I think you look for those things and you, and you, and you as a lineman, you got to be a dang good teammate. I mean, you have to. Uh, be willing to lose yourself in order to find yourself in the makeup of the team in the O-line room. You have to be that giving. And when you look for the people like that, usually they fill in the gaps and you and you have a pretty good core. Hey, Coach David Newton, ESPN.com. So what are some consistent traits in, in the guys you have on that line up front that you think is going to make this a the kind of cohesive group that really hasn't been the last few years? 
Uh, sir, you mean the current group that we have now? Right. Oh, okay. Um, like I said at the beginning, you know, I've had this is my third day with everybody in the same room. And the, the thing you see and you hope for uh, is the willingness to learn. You can see it in their eyes, the attention to detail, their focus, intent when we're in there together. Um, you have guys, I believe, that care for each other. I mean, they, you know, early on, O line linemen are a little bit different and they're busting each other's chops, get back to work. You, you like to have uh, some of that type of human nature in the room. Um, but I tell you, you know, I think it just comes down. I, you know, I'm a firm believer in relationships and having people, you know, respecting the guys that are next to each other and helping the guys that's next to each other. Because linemen, really, at the end of the day, uh, there's a lot of great linemen, and there have been a lot of years, but they're really – as good as the guy that's next to them because we have to work in unison together. And I see that happening here early. Um, and I, I'm excited. I, you know, I truly am excited to, to be here and be with this group. And I understand you don't want to mention names in the draft, but this draft has been uh, called very deep. Um, mm -hmm. You see starting left tackles like fourth, fifth round in this draft. Certainly. Absolutely. I, I, you're, uh, I'm the eternal, <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it, being an ex-free agent, but there's good football players all the way from the first guy to whatever someone perceives to be the last guy. I, I, I just believe, look, if they can play ball and they're, they're, they're efficient and they're productive and you get them here and you see what happens, let's see what happens. And, and look, hey, we got guys in our room too that, that, that may, you know, that, that fit that mold that are already here too. So, um, the draft's always an exciting time. It's, you know, uh, when you're up for your pick, you get like a little kid and you get excited about it, but uh, you move on to the next round and the next round and so forth. But uh, there is a, there are a lot of good football players, uh, linemen in this draft. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Welcome yeah. to Charlotte. Thank you, sir. All right, and we'll finish up with Mike. Thanks. Coach Mike Salarte, Spectrum News 1. Welcome to Charlotte. Oh, thank uh, you. you you, you've talked about uh, the guys that you have and you, you're first kind of getting to know them right now, but you've been at this for a minute or two. When you talk about the, the, the makeup of a player that's going to play in that group, obviously you want good technique, but is attitude and maybe a little bit of snarl maybe even more important in your eyes to, for that group? You know, I think that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, I've never really had it posed to me that way if it's more, um, I think really the makeup of a lineman has to have tremendous balance of all of those things. But if you get a gritty, gritty guy, oh boy, that almost slipped. It's a, whoa, <laughs> that almost slipped there. Yeah, nice. You see there, you got me. Is this on like live? Oh shoot! All right, uh, all right. So what? Your, I guess your question is, when you have that grit guy or the guy who you know takes it that way. I mean. To those, those are the type of measurables that um, develop within a room, if that makes sense. So uh, everybody's saying, you know, to me, like if it's a tie, if I like player uh, X, Y, and Z, and you're all the same, you say, well, let's take the bigger, longer guy, right? Makes sense. That's where the measure comes in. But if it's a player and they're all the same, but someone has that grip that can push it, you know, that can take and bring that nasty or the attitude, uh, those guys are invaluable, and they're harder to find than you really think. Um, but I do believe it can be developed. I really do. I think that those players can help the other players in the room to understand that at the end of the day, terrific effort and the will to finish can really overcome, at times, poor technique. You know what I mean? So if I took a wrong step or I got kind of you know, in a position that I wasn't really favorable position for football – if I have great finish and I and I and my, I'm I'm really busting my ass and and getting in there and finishing, that covers up some things, you know. And then obviously you want that technique to fit with the enthusiasm, and you got a heck of a player. 